Nvidia announced the RTX 40 series, and this might be the reason EVGA left. And Intel is launching their GPU too, but like with MKBHD for some reason, and AMD doesn't want to lose its thunder, and so they talked about their GPU too. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And today, it's just, it's a lot of GPU news. All of the companies were like, uh, September 20th? That is the day that we are all going to just try to steal each other's marketing thunder. But let's start off with the official event, which was the RTX 40 series announcement taking place at the GTC keynote, which I want to say up front was really weird of a decision of NVIDIA to do because it GTC is historically not for the gaming side of things. So the fact that they were launching the gaming cards there didn't scream positivity. And then when the actual keynote happened, it was like five minutes of an entire hour and a half presentation. So it does seem, at least to me from an outsider's point of view, like Nvidia knows that they don't really have anything here and that they can't be too promotionally with these because they have so much RTX 30 series left to sell. So let's just go over the broad details. RTX 4090s coming out October 12th, gonna cost $15.99. They claim it is two to four times faster than the 3090 Ti. Put a huge asterisk on the screen. We'll talk about that in a second. 24 gigabytes of GDDR6X and it should be a triple slot card. Look at that, that's the 4090. Also, a whole bunch of AIB partners announced their cards, noticing that uh, EVGA's not in here, but they're all thick and thunkin', at least triple slot cards. Big fatties indeed. We also got the RTX 4080, two actually of them announced as well. They're coming out in November, no specific release date, starting at $899 for the 12 gigabyte model and $1199 for the 16 gigabyte model, and saying it's two to four times faster than the 3080 Ti, which again, huge asterisk. But after that, there's no more. There was no 4070 announced. And when NVIDIA was presenting it, they like went 4090, 4080, 3080, 3070, 3060. So it's very clear, even from that presentation, that NVIDIA is going to continue selling the 30 series. They are not getting rid of it. If you want a good GPU, that's gonna be what you're getting. And this new generation of RTX 40 series is only gonna be with people who have a lot of money, less sense, and wanna be on the bleeding edge or some combination of those. So I really think based on when Nvidia was announcing this, as well as the fact that they didn't spend a whole lot of time on it, as well as the fact that they're keeping the vast majority of the 30 series around, they're not super confident in this generation and they know that this is either just a stepping stone or conspiracy theory, Nvidia is gonna get out of the gaming GPU market altogether. That's just, that's a far flung prediction, but it does seem like Nvidia is giving less and less priority to the gaming side of things as they're getting more into AI, more into data centers, more into the self-driving side of things, more into robotics. It seems like they think the margins there are gonna be a lot better. And then this gaming thing is really just a distraction. But let's talk about the reason why I think EVGA may have been really miffed about this series of GPUs, the RTX 40 series, because the RTX 4090, very pricey, $15.99. It's a $100 increase over the 3090 from last year. If you account for inflation, it's not that much more expensive, but it still is a price hike. The RTX 4080 coming in at 1199 is several hundred dollars more expensive. And the RTX 4080 12 gig coming in at 899 is also a couple hundred dollars more expensive than the previous generation. But one of the things to note about these two different cards is that they're not the same GPU. When you look at Nvidia's slide, it makes it seem like they're both gonna be two to four times faster than the 3080 Ti because of the same thing. But then when you look at the specs in Video gives the 12 gig 4080 has 78% of the CUDA cores and 70% of the memory bandwidth, as well as 71% of the power draw. So it seems like the 12 gigabyte version is three quarters that of the actual 16 gigabyte version, which tracks based on the VRAM amount, but that's a significant difference and you can't beat the 3080 Ti by two to four times on both of those cards, unless you're only talking about one, etc. But the interesting thing here to note is that the 4080 16 gig is based on the 80 103 chip and the 4080 12 gigs based on the 8104. Now the speculation behind the scenes is that the 4080 12 gig is actually 
actually supposed to be something like a 3070 or 3070 Ti because it's a completely different graphics processing unit. So in theory, NVIDIA realized, hey, if we called this the 4070 or 4070 Ti, people are gonna get really mad that we're charging $900. So let's just call it the 4080 12 gig and then we can charge 900 bucks for it. Maybe EVGA was aware of this and realized, holy crap, we can barely even sell the 30 series at anything resembling a profit at the higher end. If you're gonna launch this card that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, still screw over the customer, we're not gonna have an easy time selling the 30 series or the 40 series, and it just seems like they don't have the end consumer in mind. I don't know, potentially. It does seem like it's just another way for NVIDIA to steal the money out of your wallets with good marketing. Why call it a 4070 when you could call it a 4080? Because they make the rules, NVIDIA gets to determine what they're called, not you. Oh, you think the 104 chip should be a 70 class card? Pfft, too bad. It's now an 80 class card. They could call it a Titan for all they care. The naming conventions, whatever NVIDIA wants to decide is on them. And as long as it helps them sell more cards, they're gonna decide to do it. So very weird launch overall. It does not seem like this is the top of NVIDIA's priority list. It does seem like what Jensen said in a conference call with shareholders is that they have way too much RTX 30 series inventory and they still need to get rid of it. So they're gonna launch this stuff at the high end to keep the shareholders happy and to make it seem like they're actually coming out with brand new technology this year. And that way they can be like, oh, we launched a new generation. But in reality, they're not gonna sell it. They're still trying to sell off the inventory inventory that they already had. But one of the things that PC Gamer points out in their article about this is that the 4080 16 gig is nowhere near close to doubling the 34.1 teraflops that are on the 3080 Ti, despite Nvidia's claims of two to four times better performance. But that is where the trickery and the asterisks of Nvidia's launch comes in. Because if you look at when he was making that claims, Mr. Jensen himself, it was based on two times better performance in Microsoft Flight Simulator, of course, the standard benchmark anywhere else. The four times better performance was in Cyberpunk 2077, as well as in their new Racer X Ray Trace physically simulated game that nobody's gonna play, but it's four times faster than that because the new Cyberpunk game with the four times as well as the Racer X thing has the brand new DLSS3. Check out, check out this Ray Trace physically simulated thing. They spent like five minutes on this and like, less time on the cards. I don't understand what NVIDIA was doing. But as far as the software side, DLSS 3 getting announced and it's gonna add some really cool stuff in order to make deep learning video games playable. And like in a way that is kind of really cool in that it has optical flow rendering, it's gonna use motion vectors so that it's not just simulating pixels, but it's like simulating entire frames, which should make it better. And it's gonna use NVIDIA's reflex technology so that it can actually reduce the latency, even though it's using some like motion smoothing stuff. It's gonna be a whole thing. And there's 35 games announced to already have it and them showing Microsoft Flight Simulator will have 200% better performance. Portal with RTX, we'll talk about that in a second. It's gonna have up to 550% better performance and Racer RTX is gonna have better, 425% better performance. And they showed off DLSS 3 working on Cyberpunk 2077. But one of the things to know is that when they were discussing this, they made it seem like there's new hardware in the RTX 40 series in order to enable this. Which if that is true, that means that DLSS 3.0 will be a brand new generation exclusive feature and everybody who has the RTX 30 series is gonna need to stick with DLSS 2.1, FSR 2.1, 2.2, whatever we're on now, or Intel's XESS. But if you want the pinnacle, the best, DLSS 3.0 is gonna be here if you can cough up $900 Renos. So the technology looks good, the software looks good, but NVIDIA wasn't actually very clear on can we expect this on current generation or not based on how Jensen was communicating, it did seem like this is gonna be an RTX 40 series exclusive feature. They also announced a couple other software things like RTX Remix, which should allow you to put ray tracing into video games easily using NVIDIA's Omniverse and they showed off Morrowind getting ray traced and remastered and it essentially made it look like Skyrim, which was pretty cool. But I think the coolest software thing was the fact that they announced Portal RTX, kind of harkening back to when they did Minecraft RTX and this is essentially just a remastered ray traced version of Portal and in my opinion, it looks 
phenomenal. I'm actually really excited for this. It's gonna be free DLC if you already own Portal and you should be able to play it on an RTX card, but it will support DLSS 3, which again, might only work for the RTX 40 series, but in case you have the 30 series, you should just be able to play it with regular ray tracing on. So that's essentially the RTX 40 series in a nutshell. Not important, not spending a whole lot of time on it, very expensive. They really just want you to continue to buy the RTX 30 series. We'll talk about AMD's counter to this in a little bit, but I wanna hear what you think about the RTX 40 series. Let me know down below in those comments. And I'm gonna let you know now about crypto stonks. We'll spend a little bit of time in that. Bitcoin's down 3% to be at 18.979. Ethereum's down 1.2% to be at 1346. And Dogecoin's up just a scooch to be at 5.8 cents. And Reese, are you up? Do you have electricity, my guy? Stage five load shedding's no joke. Tell me, do you got the UFD deals? Hey friends, welcome back to UFD deals. I hope you enjoyed the stream with us yesterday. I have power again, which means I get to continue existing and so did today's deals. First, we're jumping in with the Thermalrite PLS Assassin 120 CPU air cooler. Six heat pipes, dual 120 mil fans and an aluminum heat sink cover. I think in my personal opinion, this thing looks gorgeous if you're going for that all white out build. And at only $36.32, it's currently 30% off. And secondly, we have the TC Helicon Go XLR mini USB streaming mixer. Something that I personally want to pick up again. We used one a ton there in America. Sometimes it's nice to just have physical faders so you can quickly adjust things on the fly. Also, it has a physical bleep button. And at only $139, it's currently 37% off. Don't forget, you can find this deal and more linked in the video description. I'll let you get back to having Brett whisper in your ears. I have a secret about Reese. He was the guy who leaked GTA 6. Not really. Maybe, I don't know. But Rockstar, we talked about this in Monday's episode of Hot News about how this happened. Rockstar responded on Monday, but after we filmed the episode, essentially saying that this should not affect the disruption to their live game services, most important GTA line, is most important, but it also shouldn't have any long-term effect on the development of their ongoing projects, including GTA 6, so it likely won't get delayed, even though there's a whole lot of leakage around it. And Sony's gonna leak the PS5 a little bit. It's gonna have leakage of its own. It's gonna leak the disk drive. According to reports, there's gonna be a fresh update of the PlayStation 5, where it's gonna have a disk drive that's completely removable. It's gonna be attached via USB-C to the front of the console. So essentially all PS5s will be digital editions, but these specific ones with disks will have an extra USB-C port on the front for you to plug it in and that way you could read the disc and then yeet it in case you don't want the extra girthiness of the PS5. Maybe this might help with the slim edition, but allegedly this is coming out September of next year. Harkening back to the good old days of Xbox 360 having the external HD DVD, but I think the key difference here is that Sony's bundling it together in the console, whereas you had to buy this as an accessory after the fact for the 360. So. Who knows? And speaking of accessories after the fact, you get in a crash with full self-driving on a Tesla, I don't know, That's that could be bad, but Tesla expanding their full self-driving beta to 60,000 more users, owners, people who paid tens of thousands of dollars for it in order for them to be able to have the car poorly drive itself. I tried this out. I tried out the latest update, uh, not great especially here in Pittsburgh. It cannot read the lines, it can't do, like here in Pittsburgh, we have these like crazy mountain roads where it's like, in order for you to make a right turn in some places, you have to you have to actually make a U-turn. And the car was just like, I don't know what I'm doing here, I'm gonna stop and you have to figure it out. Anyways, there's gonna be 60,000 more people on the road who are doing exactly that. FSD beta expanding to 160 owners in the US and Canada. And Windows 11 expanding to second half 22 update to essentially everybody who wants it, it's now available, but a couple of the features are still coming soon, such as the file explorer tabs, as well as taskbar overflow. Those are gonna be in the future, but there are some key video game announcements, including DX11 and DX10 updates for the, the game, it's supposed to be better for video games, the latest update. I'm sure we'll see benchmarks coming out sometime soon, but it does seem like Microsoft did put a little bit of priority of making a little bit better for video gamers. We'll see how that goes. And YouTube making things a little bit better for the people who make shorts on this platform because they're announcing new monetization strategies for YouTube shorts people in the partner program. And it will actually be a revenue share setup, but it's only coming in early 2023, which from all the things I was reading, everybody was like, oh, huge new update. It's like. We're not making any money right now. Like you could you could have led with the fact that this could be potentially six months away. 
well, I'm not gonna invest in shorts right now if I'm still not financially viable on it. But YouTube announcing they'll allow creators to keep 45% of the revenue from an ad pool because there won't be ads played before shorts. It'll be in the shorts feed. So you have to pool the money together and then give the creators a cut. So it's a little different than the ads that play before a YouTube video of which the YouTube creator currently gets 55%, but also announcing that in order to get to be part of the shorts partner program, you have to have 10 million shorts views over the last 90 days and have at least 1000 channel subscribers, which based on my experience with YouTube shorts, 10 million over three months, honestly isn't that very difficult if you have a few good videos that you put out there. But also more intriguingly is YouTube announcing their creator music program, which should allow music to be used number one as shorts up to the full 60 seconds on that. But also in full long form content, you can either buy the rights to use a song in a video or you can do some sort of licensing deal where they do a revenue split with the person who you're licensing it from. YouTube rolling this out only for indie labels at the moment, but said that major record labels are reportedly interested in this. But as that if that does expand, that could be pretty cool for YouTubers to actually use music and have a way instead of just getting copyright stricken and not getting any money on their video because one part of one song was written by somebody who just decides that they want to copy strike it and Apple has decided that they want want to strike the unrepairability of their iPhone 14. It's coming out that the iPhone 14 specifically is much more repairable than the iPhone 14 because of one key change on the back glass. From the outside, this phone looks identical to the 13, but when it comes to the repairability, the back glass is actually separated from the components, making it much easier to repair and much cheaper to repair, especially if you crack that back glass. But also to note is that that only, again, is the 14. The 14 Pro Pro Max are still the same setup where there are components attached to the back of the glass and it's gonna cost you $550 to repair that. Whereas currently with the iPhone 14, in order to repair that just piece of back glass, that's only $150, which is not as terrible as $550. And speaking of things that are terrible, competition. It's bad for my profit margins, but China's coming out with competition in the GPU market. They're announcing that a seven nanometer gaming GPU from Meta X Tech should be available domestically in 2025. They're working on developing it. They're making sure that their codependence on the current American GPUs is no longer gonna be a thing working on that. But Intel working on the ARC A770 launch and it's been the most confusing thing. The A380 launching in China and then coming to America via Newegg with little fanfare, A770. Nobody knows when it's launching, but they're showing videos of disassembly and PCB shots for you to see how this bad boy looks. Oh, it's great. And there, there's a whole video on overclocking it and the fundamentals of the card, which like is good, but we don't know when it's coming out, except for Raja Kadori delivered it to the CEO of Intel, Pat Gelsinger. He got a GPU saying that they're getting the first batch of cards ready for retail and that they're excited when when are we getting these GPUs? Come on. But I mean, the CEO tweeting this, this has to be proof that Intel is shutting down their GPU department. He's a, he's he's strangling that GPU. He's murdering it, just like the entire GPU division of Intel is not gonna survive. But in case you thought that was weird, it gets even weirder because the first PC bill with the A770 was done by NKBHD just two days ago. What's even weirder about that is that the entire video is sponsored by Linus Tech Tips with the LTTstore.com screwdriver, which is absolutely wild. Since when? Does Linus sponsor YouTubers? I'm not entirely sure. LTTstore.com sponsorship coming soon. I feel like, I, I don't know if this is true, but I was one of the first YouTubers that they sponsored. I think. But NKBHD having the first A770 PC build and not to let Intel have all the fanfare or Nvidia have all the fanfare. AMD announcing that their RDNA 3 cards, RX 7000 series, is gonna be announced on November 3rd. They put this out in a blog post, which is the best medium for this kind of thing. At least we're not getting shown in Fortnite like previous people thought it was a good idea to do. But taking pot shots at Nvidia by talking about energy prices skyrocketing and that their cards are better at efficiency and performance per watt. So you should stick with AMD for that reason. Wait till November 3rd to get these GPUs. AMD has already confirmed that these GPUs should be 50% better at performance per watt. And the RTX 40 series, the, the 4090 is supposed to be 450 plus watts of power consumption, which again, Nvidia did not talk about while they were on stage. They spent so little time talking about the GPUs that I have tons of questions that they didn't answer. I'm gonna have to like dig around the internet to find it because it's probably in some press release that they released to some website that has it buried in the third line or some YouTuber talking about it 16 minutes into a 35 minute video and you just don't know the actual real answers. 
Nvidia, just just really, I think they don't care about the 40 series. I think they, they're absolutely trying to get you to buy the 30 series, and that could potentially have been one of the reasons why EVGA was done with them. And I am gonna be done with this episode of Hot News. I'll see you back here for more hot tech news tomorrow, my friends.